Hey guys, this video is 10 reasons why you might be struggling to get a job in data right now. And I know it might be a bit of a sour point. It's not a super great thing to hear, but let's be honest, a lot of us are struggling. And so let's struggle together. The first one is the market. I think the market is tricky right now. I've seen the data. It's not super pretty. So do not get too upset with yourself. It is not the best time right now. Number two on this list is your resume. Wow, that was obvious. No, seriously, hear me out. I have seen many, many resumes recently, and there is a massive issue with immediately just how it looks. Disregarding the content, even disregarding the order and the structure of things, make it look good. Like, honestly, people are not going to even think about looking past it for two seconds if they look at it and it's not pretty. I don't want it to be extremely pretty so you shouldn't have colors popping off the page like it's some crazy data visualization unless that's a thing you're going for what you want is just something that's nice and easy to read you have the white space well thought out a lot of you are just slacking on this and it's going to make it so that literally everywhere you apply to it's going to drastically decrease the chances that someone reads it so please trust me watch how it looks it helps a lot now, number three is your projects. Now, let's face it, a lot of us try to cut corners. And I'm not sure why, because cutting corners is really not going to work. But basically, the issue that I see at large is that there is many, many projects. Sometimes, actually, you put many, many projects on your resume, and I wouldn't do that. I would stick to two or three tops. Even just one really good one is a great idea. You have something there that you made, okay, that you made. Not that you watched someone make and then you made it as well. Something that you came up with. It doesn't have to be a new framework. Like I'm not asking you to invent, you know, a new web framework or a new HTML and CSS variant. You can't do that. But what you do want to do is some topic on some particular area that no one has touched exactly before. It's not going to be brand new. I'm not exactly asking you to change the world, but make something that looks good, that serves a purpose, that is not super well known and created before, and your chances will drastically increase. Like it will seriously skyrocket if you just make something awesome that you made yourself. Trust me, it helps a lot. Number four is your LinkedIn profile. Now, almost every employer will visit your LinkedIn before they contact you. It's just what people do. And if you don't even have a LinkedIn, it is going to be a massive red flag. If you do have a LinkedIn and it's just missing components, like you don't have that banner photo, your job experience doesn't really seem to match your resume perfectly, it's going to be another red flag. Trust me, make sure that your resume and LinkedIn are matching each other very well, but your LinkedIn has improvements where it can be, like you're giving people nice links to things. You have the pictures all looking good. You have quick job descriptions, maybe shorter than your resume has. Everyone will look at your LinkedIn. Trust me, make it good. Number five is your communication. And that is something that you have to sort out. Like I am still figuring it out every single day, trying my best to learn how to communicate, even though, you know, let's be honest, I've known English very well for a long time. And I've thought that I've been pretty good at communication for a long time, but I stay very, very humble in it, knowing that there's so many things I could do better. So I read books on how to do it better. I do watch video courses and people talking, the people that are much better at communication, telling me how I can improve. If you're not doing that, you absolutely should be. And it's just going to help you everywhere. If you're at the applying stage where you're saying how your skills are helping you be good for the job, if you are talking to one of the early round people in the interviews, if you are going all the way up to the CEO and talking to them, this confidence and communication with them, it, it's just going to be like everything. It's so, so, so important. So please put serious effort into it. Practice wherever you can. Learn wherever you can. It's going to help a ton. Number six is that your application is too general. I see a lot of LinkedIn profiles and they actually make me chuckle a bit where you are a software engineer, a backend engineer, a front end engineer, you're a data visualizer, you're an SQL and databaser, you're a machine learning god, you're a deep learning god. It's really funny. Like I actually truthfully do know most of those things. But I would never put that in my LinkedIn bio because it just makes it seem like you have no idea what you are. Like you don't have to only have one skill and be good at one thing. But if you are applying for a job that is probably one of those things, you should make sure that you are actually showing that you are mostly interested and mostly good at that thing. It is, of course, good to be general and we'll talk about that soon. But please remove that stuff from your LinkedIn and your application where you claim you're good at everything. Even if you are, it's just not the right move.
Now, number seven is the opposite, which is that you are not general enough. I see a lot of people that are extremely skilled in one area, but let's be honest, if you're doing something like data scientist, there's a lot of different skills that you would need. So you probably would need to be good at SQL and data visualization and machine learning and just general programming and all of this stuff, HTML, CSS, front end, that could be helpful too. Backend, Django, Flask, whatever, all that stuff could be helpful. Don't put it all in your LinkedIn profile saying that you are a god in all of these things, but make sure that your resume is structured so that you've shown that you do have a lot of these skills. So maybe you are advertising yourself as a data scientist. So your LinkedIn profile, says data scientist. Maybe you've done stuff in data visualization. So you know, you know, the Python libraries, matplotlib, plotly, stuff like that. The R stuff, if you're into that, I'm definitely not, but that's up to you. Maybe Tableau, whatever. So you have a section on that. You have a section on machine learning. So you know, model training, you know, fitting and validation and ML ops and all of this stuff like deploying those things. You have different sections that show when you know these skills, you have projects and jobs, preferably of course, not everybody does, but you have different sections on your resume that show where you know this stuff. It's not in your profile and your biography that you're a god at everything, but it is definitely good to have multiple skills. So number eight on this list is that if you think that all of that stuff is good, it's not your resume, it's not your LinkedIn, it's not your skills here, it might just be your particular interview skills. And it does take time. Like it's tricky if it takes, you know, two months to get an interview, you do one and then you're not so sure why it went wrong, but there was things that went wrong. Yeah, there's, there's definitely interview skills. And so there's technical interview skills. Definitely if you're doing data science, machine learning, no coding and SQL and machine learning really, really well. Those are the ones that come up the most is just coding style interviews, SQL questions, and some simple questions about machine, machine learning models is something that comes up a lot. If you are doing more of a programming resume, then it's definitely gonna be those hardcore leak code problems. And that might very well be the reason that you're just not getting through. So make sure you do the technical stuff and the communication based stuff, as we said, that's gonna get you through. Number nine is ignoring those general technical skills that are gonna come up with everything. Maybe you just aren't preparing for individual interviews enough. And it can take, you know, as much as 20 minutes to just actually see who you're interviewing, read about the people that you're gonna be talking to if you know, or maybe take a guess at who you'll be talking to see what they're interested in, how you can ask them questions that they're gonna find interesting and that show that you actually care about the company and that you didn't just apply to a thousand places. Maybe you did apply to a thousand places, but they don't need to know that and they definitely don't need to hear it. So make them feel special. Actually try to make them special because they're interviewing you, they are special. So give them the attention that they deserve. Give the individual people that you're talking to, you know, your full respect and try to just try to make a conversation that is an enjoyable time. And that's going to help so much, like just communicating with these people, even ignoring the technical skills. You probably will need to know the technical skills to move on. But if all else equal, you know, all they have a bunch of people that are good at technical stuff, but there's one that talked to them about hockey and they really enjoyed that they're probably going to pick that person. So try to read up about them, try to learn and ask them about themselves. People love talking about themselves. So just trust me, have a nice conversation. It's going to help a ton. Number 10 strikes on that idea that I said about applying a lot. You may have not just applied enough. And I know you probably are sick of hearing that. You're like, well, how many is enough? Like, seriously? Yeah, I get it. But if you're still looking for a job, how can I not put that as an advice? Because it's an actionable thing. Like it's not just I'm trying to be irritating and tell you. It is actionable. Like you can wake up earlier and you can apply more. There's always jobs somewhere. Like it's if you've actually genuinely run out of all possible job opportunities by DMing all possible people about all the roles that they might have, about going to each individual website for each company and applying to all applicable jobs. If you've gone to every job board and applied as best as you can to every one of them, there's no way that you just heard that and you actually agree that that's something you did. So you can wake up earlier, you can click faster, you can go on your phone less and apply more, and it's just gonna increase your odds. Like genuinely, even if you fixed nothing else, you can just apply more, it's gonna help your odds a lot. So that's the end of the video. Have a great day, guys. I hope this was helpful, and check out mlnow.ai if you're thinking about learning data science and analytics, and have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.